Good morning. Welcome to Fort Laramie Country Church. I'm Pastor Marty Rosted. We're glad you're with us this morning. Last week I was not able to be in the pulpit, so was not able to finish what I had started the week before. Joe covered for me, and I wanted to thank him for that. It's wonderful to be part of a church that has so many gifts and talents in it, and that God uses in so, much, so many ways. Let's open with a word of prayer. Fathers, we look into your word right now. We're going to ask it come alive. Father, I'm going to ask you teach us today and you mold us today. Father, we do want to be disciples that glorify you. And we're going to ask you, you your word right now to do that. In Jesus' name, amen. A couple of weeks ago, because of the virus that's going on in our country, I talked about how important it was to get back to the basics. And we were actually in John 15. We're going to go back there today. And uh, we talked last two weeks ago about abiding in Christ and, and that as we do that, being fruitful should be a natural thing. But there's something else that has to happen in our lives if we're going to continue to be fruitful. And we'll be looking at that in just a few minutes. John 15, 1 through 4. I am the vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Well, every branch that does bear fruit, He prunes so it'll even be more fruitful. You are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Verse 2, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. That means bearing fruit is not optional. We must bear fruit. That's what God intended us to do. He wants to be fruitful for us. When I was working construction, we used to hang iron. We, ha we hired some new people coming on, and, and one of the guys started climbing up, getting on the iron. He came down, he says, I can't go up there and do that. And as, as, as the day went on, we kind of worked with him, and he was just too afraid to be there. And, and that wasn't bad. Being in the airs is, can be frightening at times, but he just couldn't do it. But he also couldn't work for us. Not being in the air, not working in the air was not optional. If you were going to hang iron, you had to be up there doing it. That was the option. Uh, that, that's how that works. Bearing fruit is the only option. My wife makes the best fruit salad. I don't know what she does. She adds some lemon stuff to it, but she puts all kinds of fresh fruit in it, especially uh, coming towards fall, and it's wonderful. But sometimes I think that's what the church is all about. I think that's what the church needs to look like, is one big fruit salad as God produces all these fruits in our lives and we come together. Here we've got a wonderful group of, of people bearing fruit. You saw that last week as I wasn't here. I didn't need to be here. Everybody were bearing fruit. Everybody were using their gifts and their talents and what God was doing in their lives. And the church functions that way. So what do fruits look like? God, God tells us what are the fruits of the Spirit looks like. And, and when you give your life to Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit. It says we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to produce something in our lives. And it's found in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit. It's interesting. It doesn't say fruits. It says fruit. This is all one deal. They all come as a package. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, fruitfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. The, when we re receive Christ, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to produce these fruits in our life, and that's what that looks like. And then also as we walk with the Lord, God wants to produce a holiness in our life. That's one of the fruits. 1 Peter 1, 13-16 Therefore, prepare your minds for actions. Be self-control. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. 
But just as he who is called holy, so be holy in all that you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Holiness is a fruit of God. God wants to produce his holiness in our lives. But being fruitful also comes from being obedient. Now, I used to think uh, that being fruitful was thinking up things to do for God. Uh, so I dream up all these good things and, and I think, hey, this is what we need to do. This is what God wants us to do. And I thought that was being fruitful. And I come to find out it was just kind of being busy. And, and we did a study called Experience of God almost 30 years ago. It virtually changed everything for me to understand what it meant to be fruitful. God, God in this experience in God, what he says is, is God reveals his plans to us and then that's his invitation for us to be involved and as we get involved, that's being fruitful. So I've learned that being fruitful is being obedient. I learned that as I adjust my life to what he's doing, that's being obedient. In that experience in God's study, they, they talked a lot about Moses. Now, whose idea was it to deliver Israel from bondage of Egypt? It was God's idea. He just invited Moses to be part of it. And as Moses became part of it and adjusted his life to what God was doing, he became fruitful. Whose idea was it to, to, to how, who delivered Israel from Egypt. God did. Moses didn't. He didn't have the ability. That happened as he joined God in his activity. We make the adjustments to what God is doing, and then we're fruitful. It had a story in there. And if I could say there's one story I've read to understand this and grasp this and help me understand what it means to be fruitful, it was his story. And he talked about how, Henry Blackaby talks about how they wanted to start some campus ministries. And they tried for two years and they tried to, to get Bible study going and it wasn't happening. So one day he stopped and he told his students this. Let me read some of this to you. One Sunday, I pulled our students together and said, This week I want you to go to the campus, watch to see where God is working, and join Him. And they asked me to explain. God had impressed on my heart these two scriptures. This is Romans 3, 10 through 11. There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. And the other one's John 6, 44, no one can come to me, Jesus, unless the Father sends me to draw him. You know, and, and he explained. He said, virtually, God's the one working around us. And so what he told his students to do, when you see somebody come up to you and ask a question about God or something out of the ordinary, stop what you're doing and go doing it. Well, there was a young gal there said, I've known this gal for two years and she came to me and says are you a Christian that gal said immediately I stopped what I was doing I had a class to go to I didn't go and we went and had coffee she said we've got some of gals together doing a Bible study but we don't understand we need a Christian to lead it would you do that that's where God was working and come to find out over the next two years they started three women's Bible studies and two men because they joined God where he was working. That is being fruitful. God was on the move and he invited them to be part of it. You know, uh, we moved to Claremont to pastor. God had called us to be in the ministry. That wasn't my idea. That was God's idea. And as he revealed where we saw where he was moving and invited us to be there, we went there. That was being fruitful. And then when God called us to Torrington, we, that wasn't our idea. God said, I'm about to do something in Torrington, Marty. We want, I want you to be involved in that. So we left Claremont, moved to Torrington, and God moved in a mighty way. We moved to Fort Laramie, that wasn't our idea. God said, Marty, I'm about to do something in Fort Laramie. I want you to be a part of it. So that's how that works. So we came. And I can remember when we were in Torrington, a young man by the name of Cody Dyer, uh, his wife Kim, 
Uh, we were sitting there one evening. I'd been watching this couple, and it seemed like God was working in his life. And I looked at him and I said, are you struggling with full-time ministry? And he looked at his wife and kind of smiled, and they had been. Well, God was working, and that was our invitation to be involved in their lives. And so through that, we called him in as an associate. Now he's a wonderful pastor of Lifeway Church in Torrington. God was moving. That wasn't our idea. It wasn't Cody's idea. It's where God was moving, and we just joined him. You know, I was, I'd ask a young man one time to go out to lunch. And as we talked and we visited and, we, and the conversation got to Jesus, he started asking all kinds of questions. That was my invitation to join him. And the young man gave his life to Christ. That wasn't my idea. God was drawing him. I was just asked to be obedient. That's being fruitful. So the other thing that goes on here, if we're really going to be fruitful, there's something else that must happen. If we're going to be more fruitful, there's something that has to happen. Verse 2. Well, every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it'll even be more fruitful. Now, it says it must be pruned. So I looked up the word pruned and what that means, what the pruning process means. It says, a practice involving a selective removal of certain parts of a plant, such as branches, buds, or roots. That's not right. I want to be fruitful, but I kind of want to be rewarded for my fruits. I don't want to be pruned. But we have a father who loves us and is a wonderful gardener. And everything he does has purpose. He knows exactly how and when to prune and what's best for that branch. In fact, it says properly pruned vines will yield high quality fruits much earlier in their lives and produce significantly longer. That's how important pruning is and knowing exactly how to prune. This past week, I've, I've struggled with some nerve problems in my back. And uh, the doctor suggested an injection, and I had no idea what that meant. But you lay on a table, and, and, and you're laying flat on your stomach, and he said, I'm going to inject a deadener. And I'm telling you what, he injected that, and it shot down my leg like fire. It, was, it didn't deaden, it enhanced the pain. He says, is that where your pain's been? I said, yes. Then they inject a dye to make sure that's exactly where it's going. And then they inject whatever he injected into my back. And I'm telling you, it was the most painful thing I've ever experienced. It was, it, it, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I actually got a little verbal about it. But afterwards, the doctor came in and he said something. He said, he says, we did exactly what we needed to do. He says, because your pain was so intense, we got right where we needed to be. And I'm going to tell you, that was three days ago. I have no pain in it today. And the reason is, it, it, it was exactly what needed to happen. That's, that's what God does. If we're going to be more fruitful, we have to trust that He knows exactly what He's doing as He prunes. Now, He's got a sharp knife here. Uh, uh, and that's what it takes to prune. And He uses a lot of different things. This is what I use to prune. Uh, when we're cutting branches and tree, this is how I prune, you know, and, and it really works. It just, you know, you, it cuts nice and takes off what it needs to do and, and I can maneuver it and I can get done. Well, God's far more skilled at this and He uses a lot of things in our lives to prune us. Relationships, illnesses, trials, and, and pruning can be very painful and, and unpleasant. In fact, I worked with a guy by the name of Frank, and his dad actually raised grapes in upper New York State. And, and Frank said during the winter what they would do is he was a young man and, and worked with his dad. They'd go into the, the vineyard there, and that's when they would cut and prune. And you go, man, it's wintertime. That's when the plants are having the hardest time. But that's when it was most effective. Now, the problem with that is it's real easy to get self-focused during the pruning process. So we try to hang on to what God's removing. And if we're not careful, we'll start to fight that. And you can see it in the questions you ask. You go, why me? Why now? But, it, but really, if we want to move ahead, as if we want to be move, more fruitful as, as, as God prunes us, uh, we need to ask the right questions. But also, if there's something in your life, if you're moving ahead and, and you want to go someplace, there's an obstacle in your life, don't you try to remove it? 
so you can move ahead sure you do we were elk hunting one time and we dropped into this country we wanted to go elk hunting my son had his jeep and i had my toyota and we were rough country getting in there and we came across where some trees had fallen not all the way across the road but enough that our vehicles couldn't go under there. Four-wheelers could, but we couldn't. So we got out saws and we spent some time there removing those obstacles so we could move ahead. That's what God does as He prunes. We need to embrace that, knowing that it's moving us ahead to be more fruitful. Uh, so questions you, we should ask when we're being pruned isn't why, but what God trying to teach me. We need to say, what, why is God trying to remove this in my life? And there is a reason. And so what I do personally, when I'm struggling with it, I go into God's Word. In fact, Hebrews 4.12 says it this way. We know the Word of God is full of living power. It is sharper than sharp dagger, cutting swift and deep into our innermost thoughts and desires, and with all their parts, exposing us for what they really are. You know what that says? That's pruning. That sounds like pruning to me. That's what God's doing. And as we look into His Word, sometimes it gives us some real understanding into why He's removing those parts. Remember that, that God only removes those necessary parts, the only things that need to be removed. Nancy worked at Hunter's Hot Springs. That's up in Montana. And, and it used to be hot springs way back into the 1800s. Well, somebody bought it and started using that hot water to, to raise tomatoes. And she used to go there. And she talked about one of the things they'd do is they went through, they'd remove these sucker, they called them sucker, things on the plants that grew that, that really didn't produce anything but took energy and, 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 and took nutrients away from the, the plant that was producing. And, and they called them suckers. Well, Suckers are those things that are dead in our hearts and, and, and that need to be removed, such as bitterness and resentment, selfishness, self-centeredness, arrogance, and pride. Those things need to be pruned if we're going to be more fruitful. See, see, pruneful, she used to go there every day and do it. It's not a one-time deal. It's a lifetime, an entire lifetime in our lives. We're going to be. God never stops. He loves us enough to continue to prune and go on. We had a rose bush in our yard in Torrington and had those real pretty little red roses on it. And Nancy would go out as they were coming to bloom and they were blooming. She popped them off. What are you doing? Well, she did it all summer and, and all summer she did it. That plant, that plant just kept producing roses until she stopped. And as soon as she stopped, the plant stopped producing roses. Now, this is the exciting part. When God's pruning us, that means He's getting us ready to be more fruitful. You need to think about that. What's God preparing us for? He's getting us to be ready to be more fruitful in whatever part of our life. Well, every branch that does not bear fruit, He prunes so it'll even be more fruitful. That's the exciting part, friends. As hard as it is to go through that pruning process, God has something far more in front of us. He wants us to be fruitful. Also told early on that Jesus is the vine. And really apart from him, we can do nothing. A vine is a source of life. That's the starting point. If we want to be fruitful, if we want to have a life that's full, Jesus, Jesus said, I, I have come that you, in John 10, 10, I have come that you could have life and have it more abundantly or more full. So what he's talking about here. In fact, 1 John 5, 11 and 12 says it this way. And this is a testimony. God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. He who has a son has life. He who does not have the son does not have life. Friends, you will never have life without Jesus Christ. He came and died on this cross for our sins. He pruned those sins out of our life when He died on the cross. Our part is attaching to the vine. And you do that by asking Him to come into your life and you trust Him with that. Sometimes it's as simple as yes. Father, I know I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. Please come into my heart right now. I want to be fruitful. I want the life that you intended for me to be. If you've never done that, you can do that right now at home. It is that simple. Father, I need you in my life. I need you to forgive my sins. I need this abundant life. If you've never done that, do it. And if you have more questions about that, 
on our face page, on our, our Facebook page, our web page, our phone number's there. Please call and talk to me about it. I would love to visit with you about it. Let's pray. Father, we want to be fruitful. We want to live a life that's full. Help us to embrace this pruning process so we can even be more fruitful. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.